These are pretty nice. But what else is nice is that uh, at MCD1 Studio, we offer free housing to all flying bugs and insects at night. So open the door up. Our house is your house. Come on, fly in. Love the fluorescence. They don't flicker like LEDs. That's good for cinematography. And you guys can fly in here, buzz around, go by your face, and then you can just kind of find a place to lay and die overnight. It's fantastic. Let's check out the truggy. Mario is with us, so if you hear beautiful lines of just You know that there's clay sculpting going on that we're not gonna show. I see what you're gonna do there and you're not doing that. That's for another episode. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to cover, take you guys through the process, right? Everything is a story, everything is a process. The Truggy is 100% ready for powder coat and then reassembly. We talked about this. Let's touch on the story of the Truggy. This is JK or Justin's Armor Craft Truggy, 13 year old car, LS3, big travel, 40s, big hubs, turbo 400, like bare bones, raw dog Truggy, tube chassis, no Y frame, um, some plate work. Cho, Ocho Fab did the upper arms and this thing's been rolled a couple times. I know there was one story where he said, it's, it's mostly a glamorous car, but there was one where he was leading his pack of guys and doing like 70 or 80 and came over something and boink on the front bumper, does a full front flip and then lands back on the wheels. And he's like, oh shit, did anybody see it? And everybody else was over the hill. And he's like, all right, cool. And he just kept going. So this thing's seen its fair share of um, partying, I guess. Uh, he wanted to update it originally, do a windshield for it, redo the panels that were on it. The panels were just very like rudimentary, no like edge roll on them, um, no, no step bead roll, just basic paneling. Uh, so he just wanted to do like a facelift and that's what we did, except we got a lot of design elements out of this thing. Some based off of just needing to be functional. Like this thing did not have a windshield. So when we put the windshield in there, how is the radiator gonna get air? So we built functional roof scoop uh, and then respected some of the, the origins of a truggy being you know, like a, I mean, I hate that it's that typical truck buggy thing, but the origins meaning it's a, it's a very open, layout open plan exposed tubes so like tasteful sheet metal stuff there's a lot of uh, fab diary on this if you guys want to see like the construction of some of these pieces there's definitely episodes to go back on to look at but we have done uh, quite a bit of work to get it ready for powder coat um, before i get off on that tangent let me stick to this tangent so we did the windshield roof scoop Hood Hawk, all new side panels with mesh, with mesh. Um, and then, you know, we got, that was, we did the windshield with custom glass, radius windshield with uh, trim Bronco glass, like a 96 Bronco or F-150. Uh, roof scoop, Hood Hawk, all new side panels, all ventilation, all mesh. And once we finished that, Justin's like, man, he's like, it's almost, it's almost a shame we should just like it maybe needs a dash so then boom we figure out how we're going to do a dash just so happens the original intention with the dash was to kind of span from your driver to passenger side and then the more you look at it it's like stick stick with like the theme here the theme is not complete you, oh no 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 I was watching. Don't worry about noise. You get a complete pass. 
Yeah, go for it. <laughs> you guys are gonna be excited. Well, let me rephrase that. I'm very excited to show you what Mario's got going on with other projects in here. But right now, to stick to the theme of the Truggy, it was open layout. So, right, like there's the hood hawk, but there's still like exposed chassis. And it kind of carries that throughout. So instead of doing a full span dash of full width, we would just carried the shapes through the middle, carried them from the hood hawk, um, covering the engine area, and then had a, a simple instrument cluster here and then a center console, and then we added a glove box area, and then boom, onto the treatment, the, the rear kind of uh, radiator mesh wall treatment. Trying to take you guys through the order of stuff that has been done. We've also covered B-roll on some of this stuff, so we'll be able to kind of cut in and and look at that. But this, this is I gave. So another thing too, Colin is this awesome aspiring fabricator. He's a great mechanic and he's got a good head on his shoulders. But this was the first three-dimensional aluminum job that I gave to him on purpose. I'm like, I think the shapes are they're complex but they're not that complex they're if you apply all of your fundamentals to this you should be able to get it so colin built this whole thing he built the uh, everything that you don't see here that's uh, upholstery uh, is stuff he did and it's it's great it's beautiful um, there's no imperfections and the ones that were there we fixed so this is kind of the rough layout of what you get here uh, I think if whatever angle you see, you can tell that this is this is from the passenger side looking in. This is the the face here is where you'd have all your instrumentation. So those are your gauges. There is only I think there is either six or five. Shifter still stays in the relative location. These guys don't go too high, so that your knob is not, you know, you're not knocking your hands or you're having anything bind or collide with that. Um, and then we kind of rearrange stuff, and then we also added a trim panel here that has cup holders, has your fire suppression relocated because the fire suppression was on the back wall in a really weird spot that would be super tricky to get to if you had to get it in a case of emergency, which is usually when you have to grab those things, unless you're really a prankster. Uh, and then intercoms, these ridges were kind of built for style points, uh, but we got a really good way for push to talk where you can kind of use your hands to grab, you know, four of your fingers can hold onto this thing and push to talk can go on. Um, and this whole thing's modular. So obviously like this piece comes off the top. There's a top trim panel here that has mesh in it that comes off. There's also a bottom panel here so it's a, this is your primary cover for the engine area and then you have your dash on top so the electronics aren't like getting fried or subject to the elements there so we have we have this whole shape that you know we have our instrument panel or, or cluster i guess you can call it all this is wide open this feature here is very interesting to me so the servo for the steering is inboard and uh, the brakes are obviously live and raw here and then there's a heim joint here that holds the steering column and you know it's if this was me rebuilding this car i'd go get that shit out of here what are we doing but it's so unique to the car that it's it's something that needed to have a home and stay here so your steering wheels here everything's open exposed instrument panel uh, that draws down and then what we have is our cup holders we put 12 volt plugs in there for charging um, and then there's another box here, an aluminum section of treatment here that has a uh, aircraft latch and it's a glove box. So you can put any kind of goods in here and it opens up uh, a bunch of space for storage. The other thing is this back wall. The car does have its coolers mounted in the rear. 
it's very open and, and flowy, but to add to that, we, you know, we wanted to put some kind of a, a wall treatment here. Um, you could just call that like your, your back radiator mesh wall. I don't know. I don't have anything good for that right now, but you can really get a solid win in with design on these back wall panels. Um, you can incorporate like your styling from, from the front of the car and the sides and everything you've done, you know, even like the exterior, if it's a vehicle that has a body on it, you can really tie in design elements from the exterior to the interior with these treatments on the back wall. So did this digitally designed, sketched this out, figured out what worked, and then we sent it. But once you see all this together, and that's why we're doing this episode, is really to pre-run through this stripped down chassis to show you the complete transformation and contrast of when we have this thing together. And then we're gonna go test it. So it's uh it, that's exciting for all of us um, and, I, and i hope you guys can find some excitement or uh, learn something or laugh or whatever you want to do watching but the seats this thing's tailored to ventilation and the seats so obviously the headrests uh you know or the the upper portion of the seats kind of takes up the space here that's closed this is for the parker pumper hoses the fresh air uh, and there's a little bit of movement in there. And then obviously ventilation here that can come from the side because we are gonna still retain the window nets. There's a window net that goes in this little portion of triangle here. And then there's your removable window net that goes in the larger opening. So you're gonna get air from the sides and you're also gonna get it going into the middle. And that's what's gonna come from the roof scoop. So the roof scoop is gonna functionally direct air right into where it needs to go here. Welcome, welcome, come on in, come on in. So on the outside of this thing, we wanted to add a secondary A-pillar window treatment. So I think the word of this episode is treatment. I'm feeling it, it's getting stuck in there and then I'm just uh, treatment, 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 treatment. Anyways, we tabbed all this stuff to put acrylic in here or Lexan. Uh, and then, you know, that'll match our windshield program. You'll still get all your airflow and it'll exit, we'll be good. One of the things to note too is nut plates. Uh, we talked about this with the Jeep. We have gone from nut certs to nut plates. We are no longer using nut certs. I don't like that they leave a shoulder, a, lay, a raised shoulder. I don't like the, you know, the chance that they can spin. These are removable and serviceable and they're flush and aircraft as fuck. So that's that area. That's gonna really clean things up. One of the other things I was gonna do, I had a option for the lighting package I wanted to run. This thing originally came with a big straight bar because under this radius is just a straight chassis. Like this thing is very basic in its construction. Not a bad thing, just there isn't a radius here. So we built a radius into that, but the bar that was here would not work. So we have uh, tabs. Part of my history and my story is when I was working structural steel, I used to, there was a era of light bars for vehicles, for lifted trucks, pickup trucks, gardener trucks, anything, um, where people were putting light bars on their stuff. And, uh, you, you know, China light bars, rigid was kind of the originator, I think. Um, and I used to do like two or three of these every week and I'd have different vehicles pull my driveway and, you know, people would hang out and I'd, they'd get a set of Morgan Clark design light brackets. I did them out of stainless and it was a part of my life, so it's funny when these things resurface. But anyways, we're going to be running a Baja Designs 50-inch Onyx. Um, this is the tabs for it, and then we'll have stainless bracketry going to them. The welding shop gusset. Let me give you guys a demo. Now just think if you can guess what I'm talking about. This one grinds my gears, and it's just a me thing, but go in there and you're like, I need a 90. Do me up, fam. And you get that bad boy. So, welding shop gusset, 
there. Welding shop gusset there. Welding shop gusset there. So demo, demo, uh, add more strength, tie into the plate work that's up here and taper down, box this whole thing three-dimensionally, um, weld everything, put a, a uh, you know, we have machine billet chunks that go up in there so you can weld on them and get some really good heat into them and not warp the cans and have bump stops. The actual hard part go back in, uh, in and out of there pretty easy. So um, took that stuff off just to clean things up. You know, this is an older chassis and we're really giving it a new life. So those were just some like details that, uh, that would help out in the long run. The other treatment is the front. So there's a front bulkhead on here. This is the bumper that was here was just welded to the chassis, but it was bent. It was, you know, from whenever he did the, the, you know, the front flip, um, that thing was like pushed in and we'd always walk by and, and like Sean would be like, are you going to replace the bumper before it gets powder coated? Are you going to redo it? Are you going to redo it? And I kind of like let it slide and finally I'm like, all right, well, what's the clean way to do this thing? And the clean way, like I thought about before I was going to bed one night is to have a bulkhead where if that thing does bend, you have a big, nice standoff. Like these are almost like little mini pivot boxes uh, and they're fully boxed, all chrome ollie, and they house a two inch slug in here. So you can build off of this and have, I think we're gonna run like a radius tube with two tie-ins and then another light bar up here. And what happens is if you ever, uh, you know, punt something or, um, you know, execute more front flips and something takes damage, you can just unbolt that from the chassis and put a new one on. And it makes for the front bumper being more of a consumable than being like a R and R. Oh man, I got to take my car and someone's got to fix my bumper because I bent it. No, you don't have to do that. You just take the two five eights bolts out and, uh, you know, fix what was there and you can do it off the car. So that's what we got up front. Let's talk about a couple things in the rear, but wait, there, there is more. So these big old chingaderases, um, Justin needed like a lot of lower A arms on like big cars, uh, big center mount kits. It's, it's hard to find a jacking point. Some people just do like a, like a tube, just kind of cut a, a short piece of tube and weld it on there. Just so when you're jacking the car up by one side, the jack isn't slipping around. So um, we added jack points. This is just, you know, chromoly eighth inch plate. Um, welded on there, but it's nice little triangulated version. So at least you just have a point where, you know, this, this is the bottom side of the arm where you can just jack it up and it's not going to move. noticed was the fuel filler just very generic I don't even remember what the structure was I don't know if it was like a tube and another tube but this is tab to have just a nice plate fuel fill we'll have the geyser brothers I've used them on a bunch of cars but it's like a, it's a geyser brothers fill and it's a dry break so the dry break is actually a cap that you can take off so it's a two-in-one they're very tidy looking works great for a lot of applications um, so that'll be the bracket for that the other request was to put coolers in so an engine oil cooler and a rear diff cooler not a lot of people run rear diff coolers anymore but this thing he takes this in the sand a lot the rear diff does get hot it is a truggy with a live axle so we'll have a rear diff cooler with um, a mixture of soft line and hard line going to the rear axle and then we'll also have an oil cooler that we have up front uh, doing the same thing couple areas of this thing there's like it's been through a a couple different life changing moments with fabrication where I noticed like a lot of miscellaneous holes and tabs that weren't being occupied anymore. One of the kind of rough areas was the spare tire hold down tabs. They were just kind of like found object, like strap, just like, just like old holes in them. And so just the Armada uh, machined eyelets are a great thing for stuff like that. If you have the right size for tie downs or for Y straps, 
So just got those replaced on there. Uh, and then we cleaned up some of the rear portion of the bumper. Excuse the rust, but everything is pretty much ready. Oh, also the light bar, there's a 50 inch rear facing bar here that'll be a big amber. The one of the, the trans cooler here kind of blocks the middle, but it's, it's a big wide 50 that's recycled from the front. Um, well, how is it, how is it, is it going to be too bright? No, it's not going to be too bright. It's just going to be an amber. Oh, that's an asshole way to talk. Let's fix that. Um, what we did with that is instead of getting like a RTL, we just took the front 50 inch that was there, the straight one that we talked about, flipped it backwards. And then we have an amber lens that goes on that. So it's just a dedicated amber light. Um, it'll be big and bright and awesome. Uh, I, I told the guys, like, I feel like this, the vibe of this thing with the color combo and everything is going to be like a steampunk spaceship. So if you can imagine that, just do your best. And if not, I will show you what my vision of that is coming up. Plans for this thing, obviously powder coat. So everything has been broken down. We're going to transport some of it like, you know, with the body panels on like this, just to make it easier and safer. Cause the best place for those panels to stay true and in shape is on the car. So he can just take it just like this. And once he gets it there, everything can be segregated. The suspension is all going to be one color. I don't know if we talked about it before, but I'm going to leave it as a surprise right now, just so you can look forward to it. But it's got a really good combo of contrast here. Uh, and the body color I've probably talked about before, it's not going to be silver, but it's the other one that I did talk about. So if you know, you know, um, we will palletize everything accordingly. And then I will mark and inventory every part that is getting this specific color. And then we'll be able to account for everything as well as make sure that each part has the right color that it's getting. So that's the next step here. Once this thing comes back from powder coat, uh, we're having the rack service, the rear diff service. So that stuff will be going on. Oh, told you they can come stay. So all this will be gone through. Oh my God, he said gone through, oh my gosh. This thing is going to be gone through. It will be uh, completely gone through. So that also looks like shock tuning. It's never been tuned and it's been driving off road fast and gnarly for 13 years. So it's going to be like a night and day thing. It's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, get everything back from powder, start reassembly, new bearings, uh, wherever they need to be, check the rotors, check the paths, check the hub bearings, uh, make sure all the bolts are okay. Anything that's not shanked, we'll shank, put new hardware in redo the brake line plumbing just because i don't i don't know just that's a chapter we don't need to get into but that we can redo the brake line plumbing and tidy that stuff up i think it's okay on the suspen the suspension components uh, but just through the chassis we'll get a win in there uh, i think we're going to add an impact and a couple little things but those will just be like either in bags or uh, bolt-on applications so final assembly this thing um, do all the treatments get it completely ready for uh, testing and then we'll go out and test it test all the systems introduce it back to justin justin can go with us testing and drive the thing um, and then we'll probably take it out to glamis just for for a final shakedown and to kind of watch it do its thing no crossing the line dude so this is our Truggy check-in. Bare bones, ready to go to powder coat. All the interior stuff is at upholstery, getting done right now. We bring this thing back, put it all back together. All the stuff that was out for service is gonna go back in, probably weigh it, get the shocks bench valved with Keith, put them back on, and then we uh, check back in with this thing. And then we have another episode of testing, and then we go out to Glamis. So I hope you guys Kind of got caught up with this thing i look forward to the next phase i just wanted to show everything broken down and and what goes into this uh, like comment subscribe have a good day